To the modern bodybuilder, winning the Mr. America title would mean prestige, status, and income from seminars and endorsements. But in 1965, when Dave Draper won the title, bodybuilding was looked upon as a freak show with only a small subculture of hardcore bodybuilders understanding or caring what the Mr. America title really meant. In those days, um, it wasn't recognized by the public with uh, great respect or admiration. Uh, uh, I was pleased amongst the, only the, that group of people that participated and a small group of people that were in bodybuilding. This is 20 some years ago. I uh, won Mr. America in 1965. Um, there, there was there was that sense of glory with it then, but amongst the the uh, the public, I felt a self consciousness and uh, an embarrassment uh, being a large person, and uh, people would uh, would notice me in crowds and uh, have unkind things to say rather than encouraging things to say. And yet, Dave did benefit from the publicity. After winning the Mr. Universe title in 1966, he secured a co-starring role in the film Don't Make Waves with Tony Curtis. His performance led to a contract with MGM and roles in television shows such as The Monkees and The Beverly Hillbillies. But Dave was growing deeply disenchanted with Hollywood and its sometimes superficiality. This, of course, was years before such roles as Rambo and Commando brought muscle men to the screen in a positive, heroic light. A bodybuilding wasn't such a term as it is right now. Now it's a very popular term. Then you, you were a guy who lifted weights, or a more pop popular term in those days, back in the 60s, was a muscle head. And uh, that was uh, not so much fun to live with and uh, to deal with. And the parts that were available to, to you through, uh, through Hollywood uh, were parts that portrayed you as a mu muscle head, not a, a heroic image such as the Commando or a Rambo. By nature a shy, independent person, Dave started bodybuilding at 12 years of age, being too small for football and other team sports. So he found solace in the hard and instant gratification of training with weights. By the time I was 15 and 16, I noticed that there was some development taking, that I had shoulders and I was getting remarks from uh, my wrestling coach in high school and uh, from just my mates and peers. And then I started to notice by 17 that there was definitely a, a broad broadening of the shoulders and a narrowing of the hips and that that this was I started to appreciate this and uh, this motivated me to just continue it never ha never having an aspiration to to go for any competition still not having seen the magazines or aware of the of the, the of the giants that of that day needing to escape the fast lane lifestyle of Los Angeles and Hollywood Dave moved to scenic Santa Cruz a small artistic town nestled next to the stunning Pacific Moving to a small town did not allow Dave to escape his own demons, though. As I was in the process of becoming a, a, a Mr. America star and Mr. Universe and heading towards a becoming Mr. World, which I won in 1970, um, I also became involved in drugs and marijuana and uh, uh, some of the, the common street drugs. And... This I, I noticed as being just so common and every day that it didn't seem right or wrong. It just seemed part of the lifestyle that was going on in Venice, California and, and Los Angeles area where I was putting my years together. There was a, tr there was a period of 20 years up until 44 years ago that I was uh, constantly under the, the, the uh, influence of some mind-altering drug and finally succumbing to, the, to, some, succumbing to it uh, four years ago uh, with uh, congestive heart failure where I, I needed to go to the emergency ward uh, in Dominican Hospital and uh, be immediately put into an intensive care unit for attention for progressive heart failure. And uh, I looked at my life at that time. I, I, had, I was down to a half a bottle of vodka and two, two friends that were willing to take me to the emergency ward if I agreed. And uh, my family uh, had diminished and uh, although they, they loved me and stood by me, they, they, uh, I had pushed, put them aside. Uh, this was four years ago, and uh, I spent up until these days in the process of recuperating. And uh, there was a, a time when the, the, uh, 
the lines that uh, that show that you're alive or dead would uh, would become very faint in the hospital. And um, it's not a war story that I'm that I'm, I'm bringing out. It's uh, I hope that uh, the viewers will understand that that uh, that I went through that and. Uh, uh, it was maybe two years ago that I was still having trouble ordering a ham sandwich at a delicatessen. I couldn't make up my mind, and I didn't have the money to buy it if I, if I had made up my mind. But there has been some uh, enormous amount of re recovery that's taken place because of uh, friends that, after I went through my initial stages of recovery, stood by my side and, and uh, gathered around me and helped me. The future seems bright for a renewed and revitalized Dave Draper. The blonde bomber, as he is known throughout the world, has felt the full weight of the fame and glory so many seek. With his personal and spiritual life firmly intact, Dave is focusing on creating, learning, and growing. I just couldn't be more pleased with my life the way it is turning out and what's before me in the way of opportunity. And, and uh, uh, it's just so much of a, a thrill and a challenge to me these days. And, so much appreciation because I, I was uh, in such a pocket and so near death at one time.